Okay, guys, we'll wait for a couple more minutes to see if anybody else shows up, and then uh, we'll get going here. Okay, well, uh, we'll get it going. So today we're going to talk about the Spark Analysis Extension. Um, I'm Joshua Fontana from Boundary Systems. So first off, let's talk about the agenda. Well, first we're going to go over a little introduction of Boundary Systems, so who we are, and then I'll introduce what the Spark analysis extension is, and then I'll go over um, a little de demonstration of the Spark analysis extension, and we'll have a Q&A afterwards. Okay, so about me, I'm Joshua Fontana, like I said. Um, I'm an app applications engineer from Boundary System, and I've been there for about a little over three years. Um, have a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering and associate's degree in mechanical drafting and design. I have expertise in uh, manufacturing processes, uh, <clears throat> value stream management, lean, and engineering software. About Boundary Systems, we're a technology leader um, whose partner, partners include PTC, Solid Thinking, eTrage, Autodesk, and, uh, and other technology companies. Uh, we're the number 16th fasting, uh, fastest growing private company in Greater Cleveland. Some of our capabilities include product lifecycle management, data management, CAD and design uh, consulting, simulation, and product development. Here's just a small glimpse of some of our customers that we handle. Okay, so some of our accolades include um, some industrial awards from the Inc. 5000 and the Weatherhead 100, and other accreditations uh, for Windchill Certified Implementer, a PTC preferred service provider and a PTC certified training partner. So some of our solutions offered here are from uh, PTC, uh, Solid Thinking, eTrage, Autodesk, and Noesis. Okay, so for any further questions, uh, you can contact me for technical questions, Joshua Fontana at jfontana 
at boundarysystems.com. Or if you have any sales related questions, um, you can contact Tony Malarney. Okay, so let's go over uh, what the Spark Analysis Extension is. Um, so, so the solution allows, this solution allows uh, design engineers to electronically analyze their designs to identify if electrical components are violating insulation rules. So there are two types of analysis. The first type is the clearance analysis, which is to identify the shortest distance between two conductive parts or between a conductive part and the outer surface of an enclosure when the distance is measured through air. The second type of analysis is creepage analysis. And that is to identify the shortest path between two conductive parts or between a conductive part and the outer surface enclosure when the part is measured along the surface of the insulation. And without an automated solution for 3D electromechanical assemblies, it is not uncommon for designers to fail to fully investigate a design. Either the analysis was deemed unimportant or it is simply too difficult. Thus, the designers had to rely on experience and ultimately physical prototypes. Identifying an electrical problem at the prototype stage is of course very expensive and can have catastrophic consequences. Okay, so let's look up how the mo models are set up. First, we have to set, set up a conductivity of the components and to do this, a parameter is added to the component to describe CTI value. Once the parameter is set in Creo Parametric, uh, you will understand as whether the component is conductive or non-conductive. As a safeguard, components are components that are missing uh, by accident if the CTI is not set on a part clearance or creepage assumes that the component is conductive in a worst case scenario. Um, for components such as fuses, uh, there is flexibility to define a quilt for the conductive areas where the rest of the part is non-conductive. To further improve the performance during the uh, validation of designs, setup colors are temporarily assigned to components with different CTI classes for visual recognition. The clearance and creepage file allows, uh, which can be added um, either with a simple CSV or a text file, is used to define all the nets which will exist in the design, as well as their minimum distances, which is required to provide a suitable function, functional insulation. The file also determines maximum groove, groove width for gaps which will cause a short circuit. The file is used for analysis and helps to automate the assignment of the components to the respective nets. Okay, the analysis allows the user to determine the type of analysis which is to be performed and what net components or quilts will be analyzed. The analysis criteria has been designed to be as flexible as possible, allowing users to optimize the analysis time. For example, if the design is to be uh, refined to solve a particular electrical problem, the user can simply analyze the two components, improving, and improving the performance of the analysis. Okay, so once the analysis is complete, the violations are displayed 
for further investigation. When a violation is selected, the path will be displayed in the graphics window to help the user better understand the failure. Users may also override the results and ignore the violation. By doing so, their username is stored in the assembly along with a note in which they will describe why the violation was overridden. Lastly, the analysis results are stored within the assembly for later design reviews. Okay, there are some assumptions associated uh, with the analysis and Creo parametric. So it is assumed that everything within the part is made of the same material, therefore they are considered to have the same con conductivity. It is also assumed that any joints between any two parts touching um, each other in the assembly to be analyzed are uncemented. In other words, no joints in assembly are considered as cemented during the clearance and creepage analysis. Okay, and then we'll go into uh, Creo Parametric and do a demo. Okay, so here's our parts we're going to be analyzing today. Um, so first off, if we go to the analysis group here, or the tab, and then the design study group, we see an electrical clearance icon. So that's where we can analyze and put in all the different curriculum for the analysis. So first off, we're going to go and grab a clearance and creepage file. Again, that is just a simple Excel file. There's a, a proper gates here, and I'll show you the Excel file. So here's the Excel file stating the clearances needed for uh, the individual components in between the ground and the DCM and DCP and the clearance in between the DCM and DCP here. And this is the target. And of course, we need some uh, safety factor involved. So that's why these numbers are larger than the target value. And the target value is associated with Uh, industry standards. Okay. So next we can go and set up the net. So here's where we can set up the components for that are going to be analyzed. So for the DC, DCP, we can go to individual components and add them. And we can select them on a manual basis. What we can also do is if we go to sets, we can add a set and then have the components found and notice that they, the other component gets selected also. And we're going to do the same for the ground. So again, we'll add another set. And find that and because the two conductive components are touching, um, it finds all the seeds within that selection set. So again, I'll show you that the parameters associated with these parts have a specific parameter in it called the comparative tracking index or the CTI. 
which lets the software know if it's actually conductive or not. So in this case, we have an integer of zero, which means that it is conductive. And we can view the other parts parameters too associated with the design. Okay, so now we'll go in, we can analyze the clearance creepage or both distances, as you can see here, with the checkboxes in the UI. So we are interested in both the clearance and the creepage paths, therefore we're going to check them both. So now we can go to um, the net pairs and determine what we want to analyze at one time. So again, we can analyze individual components or we can analyze them all at the same time. It really depends on uh, how much system resources you have and what exactly you want to analyze. There's also some other options here where you can check the difference between the net pairs that we have previously set up, or if you're simply trying to find um, the clearance or creepage between two components, then you can select a quilt or component pair right here to define uh, quickly what you want to analyze. But for our analysis, since we have it previously set up, we'll use the net pairs. So I'll go ahead and compute. And it does take uh, some a decent amount of memory, but in this small assembly, it only takes about a minute. If, you, if you're analyzing large assemblies, then um, of course, more system resources will be needed for that task. Okay, so as soon as the analysis gets done, the net pair violations dialog box shows up. Okay, so we can select the individual um, analysis and then view the distance between the two pairs. So as we can see here, that it shows us the gap in between and the distance, and then if it's red, um, we'll see that it's actually in violation. If it's green, then it has passed. If it's white, then it has not been analyzed yet. And then if it's yellow, then the analysis has been overwritten. And I'll show you that here. Okay. So we have this analysis. What we can do is just select. Okay. And we'll save the model. And you'll... We'll close this down. And erase not displayed. And if we go back to open and open up the assembly again, we'll notice that if I go back to the analysis and then the electrical clearances, that the analysis is still uh, saved in the assembly, so you don't have to go back and set it up to reanalyze. And if I go to info, net pair violations, we can pull up the net pair violations dialog box again to display where the violations are. So, of course, there are some violations um, in this circumstance. So, we are going to modify the housing here, the in insulation piece, and be able to fix the violations. So, I'll go ahead and activate 
that part. And then change some of the dimensions so that the violations are fixed. And then I'll regenerate and watch the geometry update appropriately. And again, the thickness here could be updated. And now that we can have the geometry updated, we can activate the main assembly and go back and reanalyze the components. And again, this takes just a minute. And it does do a relative finite uh, an element analysis where the volume is broke up into smaller volumes for this type of analysis. Okay, so we can see here that the DCM and the ground is good to go. So here, in this case, between the DCP and the ground, the value is very close, so we can go ahead and select the value and then overwrite that. So again, it saves the name and the date, and then you can put a note in here also. Also with creepage, you can go in and check if everything's been updated. So we have two greens and a red, you can see the distance between here is still in violation, but again, the distance between them is very close. So we'll go ahead and overwrite that. And we'll say OK. So in summary, <clears throat> the clearance and creepage analysis enables engineers to fully analyze a virtual prototype and find issues prior to manufacture, then optimize the design through improving space, materials, etc. The clearance and creepage analysis also ensures product safety, reducing the uh, production cost and time to market. Again, my name is Joshua Fontana and <clears throat> For any technical questions and sales, you can contact Tony Lorney. Thank you for your time. Now I'll take any questions associated with the software. And if you have any questions, you can um, put just type them into the go to window dialog box and I'll answer them.
Okay, no questions yet. Um, I'll wait another minute uh, in case people are typing them in. All right, well, it doesn't look like anybody has any questions right now. Again, <clears throat> for any of your um, tactical questions or um, sales questions, feel free to contact me or Tony Malarney at Boundary Systems. And I want to thank you for, oh, oh, we got a question. Okay, so the question is, what are some an example of some of the standards um, for the clearance and creepage used? Okay, so that's a good question. Um, so the standards that were utilized here <clears throat> were from um, a company standard. So let me show you the standards utilized. Um, let me pull them up here. Here we go. So this is what was supposed to show up uh, during the presentation. Um, so this is a document that was created by um, the company. Um, so this has just been defined uh, within this certain voltage range that this amount of uh, clearance needs to be utilized. And like I said, during the analysis, um, we added a safety factor to the minimum clearance uh, for the analysis. Okay, the same goes with creepage. So the creepage is, uh, distance is associated with the voltage, and then um, you can select the appropriate um, uh, clearance from there. Okay, and then once you're in there, you can give it a safety factor and then define that within the Excel document for analysis. Okay, that was a good question. All right, well, it doesn't look like we have any more questions here. Um, but I would like to thank everybody for coming to the webinar. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me or Tony. Have a good day.